Hey everybody, Joy here. It's Tuesday, February 22. <gasps> it's 22222. <laughs> How about that? There's got to be something special about this day, right? I'll tell you one thing, we had a downpour torrential of rain last night. Our bird, three little bird bath levels are all full and our pond has come up two feet. The one out here in our little pond. So, oh how wonderful. And the trees all got a really good drink and I love that God waters the trees, don't you? So, Jerry and I went fishing yesterday and we came home with five or six fish. I don't remember how many, but we ate them all last night. <laughs> but we had half of them left over. But I wasn't up here at all. I did my devotion yesterday morning and I skedaddled out of here and went fishing with Jerry and it was a wonderful day. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about pajama pants. Pajama pants. The other day, you saw these on Lucy. This is my second pair of probably 10 pair I'm gonna make. <laughs> I've worn these for three nights now, and I want you to see how nice they still look. These two, these have not been ironed. They haven't been ironed, they haven't been washed, they might be washed and dried, they might be out of the dryer, but no ironing. And this is quilting cotton, or at least 100% cotton. See the pockets? It's, don't be afraid of it. Do I have to iron it every time I get out of bed? No. In fact, I don't even wear it in bed. I wear it on bed, but I still pull the covers up over me. So, um, and then I put them on in the morning and, oh, these are wonderful. I'm loving them so much. Now she's wearing the shirt that goes with these, see? It happens to go with both of them pretty good, but see, that shirt goes with these. So I'm making another shirt to go, and they go all right. But I'm making another shirt. Here, Lucy, model this for them. See? Now, doesn't the pink look better? Let me look. Yes. See? So this, the pink goes with this. I'll have this made in a couple hours. Once you have your pattern done, look at the pattern for this top. This is the back. All of my fitting adjustments are in it. This is the front. You cut this out on the fold. You cut this with the seam allowance on the back or on the fold, your choice. If you do it with the seam allowance on the back, you can take it in a little bit here at your waist and give yourself some waist tucks, which makes it nice when you have a sway back like I do. This is it, two pieces. So, wonder bar, wonder bar. <laughs> I think it's really cute, two-tone. I should make the V-neck and put an insert in it, just for fun. <laughs> okay, so this video actually starts right here. These are those It's So Simple patterns, and full price is just three bucks. So, four of them, 12 bucks. So I thought they were cute, and I really, I, I took them, and I thought, well, maybe I'll get them, maybe I won't. So I opened one of the drawers, them over in the children's drawer, and I put them in there backwards. So I thought I'll just go wander around for a while and see what else I've got here, and then if I decide I want them, I'll come back. So, while I was wandering around a while, I remembered one of you told me that Pioneer Woman makes fabrics now, and they sell them at Walmart. Pioneer Woman has half of Walmart stores now. I swear, she's everywhere in there. So I thought, well, I wonder where that Pioneer Woman fabric is. So I started looking around. Well, they had this box way up high you couldn't even reach. But two or three of the things had fallen out of it, and people had put them up on a different shelf, and they were a pack of fat quarters for quilting. Well, I don't need those, heaven knows. So I looked a little more, and I found this carton of, where's my piece of cardboard? I saved the cardboard. So the Pioneer Woman is rolled up kind of like this, and has a uh, big piece of cardstock around it with Pioneer Woman, this, that, and the other thing. And it's all wrapped up, and it's a three yard cut. And so you can't have it cut. You, I mean, you just buy it. It's a three yard cut, and you buy it or you don't. So I thought, oh, I love her florals. Let me see what she has here. Well, a lot of them were gone, but I found one that I loved. Let me show you. Ta da! I just got done ironing it. Just got done. So I thought. I would cut out a pair of PJ pants today out of this. 
and then I'm going to find something out there in my stash that matches it to make a top to go with it. But isn't that fun? You know, I wouldn't wear them out of the house. It's going to be pajama pants. And I'm going to make this pattern here. Here it is. L9506. And it's just pants that have pockets and elastic. And so it's going to be a rubber band waist with pockets, and that's the top I'm going to make to go with it. It's going to be pajamas. I love to wear my pajamas after dinner at night and in the mornings, but they just lay on the floor at the end of the bed at night because I will not wear those to bed. I, I get wrapped up like a tourniquet, and I can't move <laughs> if I have a long gown or pants on. Let's make a pair of PJ pants, and I'll show them to you when I get them done. Have I made them before? No. Do I know what they'll fit? No. How do you make sure your pants will fit if you're cutting out a pair of pants? I'll tell you how you make sure. An easy, quick lesson. Hold on. Here's what you do. You get a measuring tape. <clears throat> you bury yourself in front of the whole wide world and show them you're fat. Take your measuring tape. Make sure it's a long one. Put it between your legs. Have a pair of pants on that fits you well. I've got stretchy pants on, so they're the shape of me. Measure from the back where the waistband attaches to the pant. Pull tight through your legs, not real tight, but so it, you can feel it touching your body. And measure to the front, usually your belly button. This is my belly button, which would be the bottom of the waistband because you're gonna add a waistband to these pants. So, bottom of the waistband in the back, bottom of the waistband in the front. I know I'm usually 26. So, let's see what I come up to. 26 on the dot. 26 inches. Okay, so I know that these pants, when I measure them, that distance, I'll put the two pants together and I measure the distance of the bowl, the crotch makes a bowl, that it needs to be 26 inches. Now, how do you know how much the front needs and how much the back needs? You have an inseam here. Pardon the illustrations. There's no way to illustrate but to illustrate. Find the inseam of the pants you're wearing. Hopefully they're where they should be. If not, measure from your water outlet valve. That's um, Lorraine Henry's. <laughs> your water outlet valve or the seam of the pants you have on. And that could vary. As long as the total of the front and the back, total 26, I'll be fine. Okay, so the front of me needs to be 11 and a half inches. 11 and a half inches in the front, subtract 11 and a half inches from 26, and whatever that gets you is how much you need in the back. Not you, but me. That's how much I need. Yeah, get you some pants that fit. You know, everybody has those tight um, yoga pants nowadays, so get something that fits you. And thank God you don't have to show your fat belly to the whole world. Okay? If you have one. Don't you just love these young girls? I love the movie stars who've had four kids and their stomach's still as flat as a board. <laughs> I told Jerry, whatever surgery they've had, that's what I want. Or he won't let me have it. It's so dangerous to go in a hospital nowadays. You don't want to go there. You just don't want to go there. I can hear what y'all say, you know. I can hear what y'all say. He said, you didn't even show us the other three patterns you bought, Joy. And you're right, I didn't. So here's one of them. This is L9631. And I like this because you can do stripes and turn the stripe a different way on the bottom. See? Easy peasy. These little, it's so simple patterns, uh, they only come with like one thing in them. They don't have a lot of pieces. And you can make it with that collar. It's kind of like the Dondi collar or not. And do you need that pattern for that? No! I don't, but I just like to get new patterns, and I think I actually own this one already. <laughs> this is L9610, and it has a scarf with it, and it has the uh, raglan sleeves. So I bought that because of the raglan sleeves. I like it. And then here is another pair of pants and a skirt, and I started, this is what I actually got the idea to make the pajama pants with. But if you notice, the other pair has pockets. This doesn't have any pockets. So I'm going to start with the other pair. But aren't those cute too? 
See, flowers. You have to have flowers. Although, I think that looks like pajamas, and I'm sure it wasn't meant to be in this pattern. It's a cute skirt, too, if you wear skirts. So, who is this? We're having a visitor today. Well, hi, Lucy. It's so nice of you to visit today. It would be so much easier to talk to you if you had a head, lady. But anyway, <laughs> I wore these to bed last night. Well, I always wear them to bed, but not in bed. I took what I was wearing off, threw it on the floor in here, and I put these pants in a different top on. <laughs> and I didn't take them off until just a few minutes ago when I took a shower. Love the pants. Love the pants. But I didn't want to put my pajamas back on since I've already showered and dressed and everything for the day. So, these have pockets. Remember that's why I wanted to bank them? Let me show you the envelope again. You've already seen it. I forget what I tell you in the first clip. So it's McCall's It's So Simple L9506. Bought it at Walmart about three days ago. And I wanted to make these because of the pockets. I love pockets in pants. Plus, they're full. Plus, you heard me say, I found the Pioneer Woman fabric. Thank gosh, it was three yards. I used every single bit of it. When you're making the pockets, you have to have more yardage. And usually, I just buy two and a half yards for pants that are out there in my stash. So I don't know that I have another piece long enough. Um, I may have to make capris, and I don't like capris, I don't wear capris hardly ever. But uh, if you have to, you have to. Now, I wear shorts. That I might do that, I might just chop them off and make them shorts. This is not the shirt I wore with it yesterday. But I slept in the shirt that I wore yesterday, and it's all wrinkled now. So, I put this one on her. And I just rolled it up so you could see the pockets. But I'm going to show you a picture of the shirt I wore yesterday with the pants that I wore all evening and all this morning during church. Right here. Oh, that shirt was a gift to me for Christmas from a dear, 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 dear friend that I love very much. But the only thing is, was not the shirt, what anything wrong with the shirt, what's wrong is with me. I am a triangle. Narrowing the shoulders, not so big in the hips, but because of this lovely belly that I've developed, I'm bigger down here than I am in the shoulders. So I go like this, see? Yes, if we can see, Joy, it's quite obvious. So the shirt was large for me up here, just as the way with all ready to wear on me. It's why I make my clothes. The ready-to-wear was very large and roomy in the top, which is great, great for sleeping in. But the bottom was very tight, and it just hugged my belly and my butt. And so I wanted to wear it with these because I just went, oh, look how cute that is with that. And I had it up here to alter because I knew I had to alter it so I could wear it. And so I made it much, much shorter, and I curved the front and curved the back, and I cut the sleeves into cap sleeves. But how cute is this? And yes, I made this shirt. And yes, I put the design on it with my scan and cut. That is the funnest machine. The funnest machine. If you don't have one, get one. If you have one and you're not using it, get it out of the closet. Get it out of the attic. Get it out of where you're keeping it. Open up and learn to use it. I'll teach you how to use it. Becky over there at Power Tools with Red, she teaches you how to use it. It is so much fun. And the designs you can buy, I think almost 99% of the designs I've purchased have been from Etsy. Or you can make your own. Scan and cut. Scan. The scan and cut, how it is different from the silhouette and the cricket and whatever else is out there, is you can take a design and scan it into, directly into the machine, and then the machine can cut it. Now it has to be a really good picture, and it has to be something that can be cut. You know, you can't like put this pattern in it and cut it out. It has to be something cuttable, where it cuts the innards and it cuts the outers, and then see it cuts all these little circles out of the middle, and it cuts the outside part, and then what you end up with is this stuck onto a clear piece of kind of stiff plastic. Um, what would you call stiff plastic? Mm, I can't think of the name right now, but anyway, you know what I mean. 
And so then you put the plastic down with the design underneath it, and then you iron it, and it comes off the plastic, and you throw the plastic in the garbage, and the design stays behind, and isn't it just wonderful? I don't know, some people may not care about it, but to me, it is so much easier than an embroidery machine, and so much faster than an embroidery machine, and here I am with an Alessimo and a Solaris. You know, it's, oh well. <laughs> so what I want to show you is how I change the pants. It's like, we want you to sew, we want you to sew. Let me find my pattern and I'll show you what I did to change it because it wouldn't have fit me. It wouldn't have fit me at all. Remember I showed you the measuring tape? Well, I was 26 inches, the pattern was only 24 without, without the waistband added to it. But I wanted the waist of this garment to hit me at my belly button waist and then the waistband would be above that, right? And the pattern was made to land an inch below your waist. So I made it to fit my 26 inches and it fits like a dream. See the pockets? Oh, they're so nice. <laughs> Show them your pocket, Lucille. Oh, love them. Okay, so this pattern comes with a separate waistband. They call it a casing. It's a great big long piece and you have to cut it out and then you have to iron it in half and then you sew the ends of it together then you iron it in half then you attach it to the pan. I didn't want to go to all that trouble. So I just extended mine up in order to just add a piece of elastic. I mean, I don't need all that extra fabric at my waist. I got enough stuff going on at my waist as it is. So I raised that so I could just fold it down, which is what I did, to put the elastic directly in the top of the pant, which was brilliant, except, except, <laughs> the pocket. And I'm gonna have to take the camera off and show you a close up of how I finished the pocket. The reason they have you put the separate waistband on is because the pocket comes up into the waist and so then you sew the band on the top of it and it covers up the top of the pocket. Well, since I changed it to do it this way, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that at all. Thank God it worked out and I'll do it again. But I didn't think about that. So I ended up with a raw edge of a pocket just floating around up there. And I'm like, oh, what am I gonna do? <laughs> so I'll show you right here what I did. Okay, so that looks nice, huh? So, look at this. You know, this is why you have to have a stash, my friends. People say, why do you have all that material? Are you ever going to use it all? I don't think of it like that. I think of it as a little store. It's my little fabric store out there. And I have everything I like in my fabric store. And so when I go someplace and I find a piece of Pioneer Woman fabric, and by the way, it's very nice quality, nice quality cotton. I recommend it seven bucks a yard. Um, and I think, oh, I'd love to make some PJ pants out of this. I wonder what I'll do for a top. And then I think, I have all of that knit fabric in there in my sewing fabric store. And I bet I've got a turquoise. I know I've got a red. I know I've got a white. I may have a gold. I bet I'll find something in there. So, look what I found. Look what I found for a top. Huh? So, yes, I have this top. I have my sewing machine top you saw in the picture. And I'm going to make a top out of this today to go with my new favorite, favorite, favorite pants in the whole wide world. <laughs> Would I wear them outside as real pants? And I don't think out of that wild fabric. I really like the wild, pretty florals for sleep shirts or sleep pants because I, I spend a lot of hours in a day wearing those clothes and my husband has to look at me <laughs> and I don't want him turning around looking at me every morning and every evening in a pair of sweatpants and an ugly shirt. 
I see a lot of women dressed like that. And I'm like, oh my goodness, no wonder your husband's out looking at other women. I want to look nice all day, every day for him. So when he looks at me, he sees somebody that looks nice, cares about how she looks, fixes herself up, and he's not out, you know, chasing other women. Hey, I've been chased by other women's husbands many times. Don't tell me it doesn't happen. I had the back already folded up and ready to put in an envelope. So what I wanted to show you on the back, I think I took a picture of it because you're not going to see it here. You can see how I brought the back up to add the elastic part. You can see how I brought the hip out, out to the waist where they said I needed my waist. Nonsense. I'm going to cut this again straight up. If a pull-up pant measures to fit your hip, you're going to pull it straight up over your hip and the pattern allows for that. So you don't need to add this on what they say the waist is going to be. That was just goofy. I should have thought of it. So I did do the usual Palmer and Plush method of marking the seam allowance, taping it down with scotch tape, clipping it, pinning the two legs together, pulling it up on my body. Oh my gosh, is that helpful. But one of the things you cannot tell by doing that is if you need to dip the crotch in the back. And I did need to dip the crotch in the back. And I have to do that every single time I make a pair of pants. How do I know that? Because when I go out there and I sit, the pant comes down. And when I'm standing, it looks like it's too, too, you know, snug here across my bones. It's not comfortable. So, I always do the scoop. If you all have watched anybody sew, sewing people, Peggy Sagers will say you don't need it, you never need it. Peggy Sagers is just wrong about that. Her butt, she has a real nice round butt and it's still where it belongs. People who are in their 60s and their 70s, I'm in my 70s, your butt cheeks fall and they can get lower than your crotch. I know, it's like, oh my gosh, this is awful. It's not that awful, but you need to allow room in the back of your pants for your butt cheeks to fit into. So you do what is called a scoop. Right here, you just come straight down on this line, come down like a half inch further, always works for me, and then taper back over to the point here where the inseam is. I just so happened to be marking the crotch on my second pair of pajama pants. These are super cute. <laughs> this is the material. Ah, so excited. Okay, so you're going to adjust the back crotch. If you need to lower the crotch seam so your butt can fit into the curve. My butt can't fit into the curve that comes on the pattern. I just know what I've made a thousand patterns. I know it doesn't fit there. So I'm going to show you how I draw it down. You want to make sure you're on the back and not the front. How do you know the back from the front? The back is usually longer here in the curve and you know that the back of your garment has three it has three notches in it. The front of the garment has two notches in it. And I just do little clips. I just cut right into it. I don't make those little V's. You don't need them. You just need little clips. So what you do is, and I know that I need a half inch. It just works for me. If you don't know what you need, start with a quarter inch. If it still feels tight like it's crawling up your butt, come down another quarter inch. You can come down as much as an inch, I believe. So you're going to come, see this? This is the seam right here. See the seam? This is the st stitching. I'm going to come straight down from the stitching, straight down. One half inch. One half inch. Does that make sense? Now if you need to, get yourself a stylus, a curve, something to draw this, but you don't have to have that. Just follow the curve that's already there. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to curve. Then I'm going to come back up to. Here's the seam line right here. That's the seam line of the inseam that goes between your legs. This is your, your butt sits right in here, and this is the inside of your leg. You're going to draw this scoop, they call it a scoop, 
back in to this point as soon as you can get there. And you may have to play with it a little bit. There now, see, I need a better curve, but that's a really good curve. See right here, my line came in a little quick. So I'll start over here where I'm going to end up. Oh, this fixes your pants like you can't believe it. It makes the waistband come up a little bit, which you probably need. So now I'm going to go over there to the sewing machine and I'm going to sew on that blue line. Then I'm going to go out to the serger and I'm going to serge this whole thing off to it's about a quarter inch. That's what I'm going to do. Why don't I serge to start with? I just don't like to. I feel like I get a much more accurate seam if I use my sewing machine first and then I go serge. Okay, so this is how you scoop. That is crotch scooping 101. And I can't see the screen, so I'm not sure what you can see. Let me see. Can you see the crotch scoop? Can you see the scoop? I think you can. Hello. <laughs> All right, I want to show you the pocket. I told you I did my pocket different than the directions, right? So here's one that I've already got pinned on. So I'm going to show you one, how I finished the back of it. The directions tell you to finish this side 5 8 inch, finish the bottom 5 8 inch, and it tells you to finish this pretty part that your hand's going to go into. So I have finished this with a narrow hem, 5 8 inch, 5 8 inch. The difference on my pocket is up here at the top, it's not going to be finished by sewing on a waistband, so I have turned it under 3 8 inch, and I'm just going to sew it down 3 8 inch. Okay? So that's the difference. So you take your pocket. Let me tell you this about the pocket. If you change your side seam over here, if you change your side seam, you're going to have to lay your pocket pattern piece down and add on or take off whatever your difference is over here because the edge of this pocket has to match up perfect. Now if you're like me and you can't see your marks, I've got two little slits. They had a notch. I didn't want a notch. I wanted two little slits because I changed my pocket. I changed the side seam, so I changed my pocket. All right, so you can see I've got two slits there. I've got two slits here. It's hard to find them sometimes, so I just mark them. That one goes there, and that one goes there. So you start by lining up the side over here. If the side of your pocket doesn't line up over here, then you didn't fix your pocket to be the same as your alterated pant. My paper patterns are always altered. My paper pattern of everything is always altered. <laughs> okay, so once you attach it to the side seam, then just smooth it out and the rest of it will just go where it belongs. We're just going to sew the top down with one straight stitch, but we're going to sew this part and this part with two top stitches. One really, really close to the edge, eighth inch, and then another one in about a quarter inch, here to here. And then I'm just going to sew this one time on at the top, because it's going to be underneath my shirt, and the this is where the elastic goes. It's going to fold to the back like this, and then I'm going to sew it on, and when I sew it down, it will sew another row of stitching across the top of this pocket. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's pocket duty. Oh, Lucy and I stopped by real quick just to say we are sorry. Um, this video, I hope y'all can get something out of it. When I shoot video clips over several different days, I have the hardest time getting them to go together in some kind of understandable format. <laughs> so, just scooch the little thing ahead or behind or just turn it off or whatever. But look here. I have the pink pajama top all done that goes with these pants. So, fun, fun, fun. In just a few hours, I have 
two PJ tops. These tops are actually nice enough to wear outside and to wear as tops. But they're going to be PJ tops and go with my PJ pants. <laughs> because that's what I made them for. I should uh, embroider them or something and put, this is pajamas. <laughs> it's nice knit though, so it looks nice, doesn't it? I told you all about the pockets. The pockets are kind of chopped up through this video. <laughs> I am so sorry. I tried to fix it and I'd say, oh, you told them this ten times. Take that out. Take that out. Put this in. Take that out. <laughs> so I apologize. So hopefully you at least learned that I used the Fit Nice System Dolman Sleeve T to make the two PJ tops and I used It's So Simple style L9506 and this actually is a copy of a pattern that was made by New Look and the New Look pattern is nicer. The New Look pattern has some other things with it and it's just nicer. But um, I didn't know that and <laughs> so this is the one that I used. Okay? So, I, if the pants could be worn outdoors and people wouldn't just laugh at the, at the granny in the flower pants, I would wear them outside just for total comfort if nothing else. But we live in 11 acres of the woods and I can wear them outside here. I could climb a tree. I could do whatever I wanted to. But I just think they're wonderful. I really do. I can't. I'm putting this on. I get through talking to you. The blouse is coming off. The pants are coming off. And this is going on. Bye for now.